G'day guys. So, I have just been examining some of my uh, Thai constellations and other things down here. Let's see if I can angle the camera right. Jeez, Pete, come on, come on, come on, dude. There we go, here we go. We're using the joystick. Nice, okay. There we go. Okay, so this one at the back, I'm not sure if you can quite see it. It has sand on the top. So the story goes that I bought this from a chick in Melbourne maybe about two months ago now, and I've just sort of had it sitting here. I've noticed the last day or two that the leaves have started drooping a little bit compared to some of my other ties. So as an example, so it's the one at this, the back here, this one over here, right? And you can kind of see it's a bit sad looking. Uh, whereas this tie here is much more, I don't know, what would you say? Vigorant. Vigorant? Vigorous? Jeez, what am I smoking? Vigorous. So I'm gonna grab it out. I was nervous at first about repotting it, but she'd put this huge layer of sand across the top and I'll let you see on screen. And I think that was to obviously deal with something like fungus gnats. Maybe she had a fungus gnat problem. But the thing that I noticed when I was using my, um, uh, whatchamacallit, moisture meter, was that it was giving me all different kinds of readings depending on where I shoved the moisture meter in. So I'm not sure what the source substrate she used at the bottom is, but it seemed like there were pockets of wet, like it seemed like it definitely didn't need watering. And then there were pockets of really, really dry and I haven't watered it since I got it. Okay, so I did a bit of digging. This is a moisture meter. I'm sure you're probably familiar with one of these. They don't measure moisture. They measure electrical conductivity. So they have two metal parts to the what would you call it? The spike here, okay, we'll call it a spike. And it's separated by plastic. And so when you shove this into soil, it's measuring the amount of electrical conductivity between these two metals. Now, when you shove this into dense soil, so compacted soil, because it is densely compacted, you've got proportionately higher moisture in that soil than if you had the same soil loosely compacted. So softer area mix, there's a high proportion of air, there's less moisture and so it's going to be less conductive electrically and give you a lower reading saying that the loose soil is dry and the compacted soil is wet. So that's the issue that I was having. So yeah, I think I'm gonna get it out today, repot it and maybe, maybe, just maybe, we'll consider giving it the chop. I'm also thinking maybe we chuck this up a pole. Yeah, maybe we do that. Mm, so many options guys, so many options. And you can also see I've been digging around here. I was trying to get in there and work out what the hell was below the sand level. And um, yeah, it seemed pretty dry, as you can tell. So yeah, I put this here to try and air layer the root that was here. She originally had this weird kind of little brown bottle with water in it and the root had effectively rotted off, but the thin sort of spindle within the root was still there. So I tried this, but I kind of gave up and was like, yeah, this isn't gonna work. Okay, so now the fun part, working out how to get meow out meow. I think I'm gonna have to do this um, and put the camera out here. So, man, I'm so happy today. You're gonna probably see the house and be like, man, it's a freaking mess. But actually we, we went through and cleaned the place for like three hours when the kids were at daycare. So <clears throat> take that kids. It'll take you at least 20 minutes when you get home to just ruin everything and make it back to what it was. Anyway, I'm gonna take face um, searching off. Get out of here. See, look at this. Follows me. There we go. All right, she's off. I'll leave you there and I will, in fact, I'll let you see the corridor so that you can see me coming out. Okay. <sighs> gently, gently. There you go, guys. Eee. Might help if I put a bit of light on. Okay. So here's what we're working with. I'll take some of this stuff out and I guess I'm gonna work out, maybe I put it back into the same pot and just redo the soil. I'm not sure, perhaps we just need to take her out first. And I'm really hoping I can do this by myself. I went in and harassed my wife who's currently having a nap and she was um, less than thrilled at the idea of waking up and doing some chores. Hey Kelly. No. Hmm. So that's why I'm here by myself. Um. Okay, so, how are we gonna do this? Because the easiest thing is to just give this a squish and lay her down. I really don't encourage her to come out. There we go. 
Yeah, okay, this is, it's so weird. The moisture meter was telling me that it was, it had these patches of wet. Looking at it here, it's just bone dry. I mean, you can probably see on the camera. Yeah, this is so dry. I mean, what should I expect? I hadn't watered it in like a month, but I kept, I was so anal that I kept using the moisture meter and was like, ooh, keep saying that it's wet, so I don't want to water it. I'm sort of nervous. But this looks like she has had it in some cocoa qua, cocoa peat. So I'm just gonna try and remove a whole bunch of that and I'll put it in some of my soil, my well-draining aeroid soil. And yeah, all right. Man, I think we could probably put it in a smaller pot, to be honest. There is so much excess soil here. Look at that, the size of the pot it was in. The other thing is, whoop, just snapped one of the aerial roots. Good, it was the dead one. I might try and put it up like this, with the roots kind of facing backwards a little bit, hoping they grow down, and try growing it up a pole. So, cool. Yeah, and this was the root in question. It um, hasn't done anything, it is just dead. Okay. Sweet. I think we'll just leave her alone and let her climb, climb, climb. What do you reckon? All right, how can I place this girl down? I guess I will take you guys with me, but don't judge me. The garage is a mess, okay? So please find my keys first. It's winter. We're thinking about buying a house soon, so we've kind of been just chucking all the crap that we don't use or want. Where have I put my keys? There they are. Constant cliche of a problem that adults face. Where are my damn keys? It'll be 10 years and I'll be saying, where are my glasses? All right, open this guy up. Here we are. Now I have to see if I can remember how to um, mix this up. And I've got my car here, so I can probably just, bleh, just lost the balance. I can probably just leave you like that. See the mess, I'm sorry. Sorry, not sorry. And I'm in socks and a tracksuit. What can you do? All right, um, so I'm gonna make my fine kind of aeroid mix. I'm just thinking what can I put it in? I need a bucket, Pete. Bucket's inside, Pete. All right, back in a tick. Okay. Here we are. So, just see if I can remember the, um, the ratios. I guess I'll just carry this with me and I'll tell you what I'm putting it in. You probably won't be able to see from there. Um, okay, so the first thing is one part worm castings. Bang, one of those. And then we need two parts potting soil. We normally use three parts perlite, although I think I'm out of the fine perlite, so I guess we'll just use the ultra chunky stuff. One, oof, I should have worn a mask, I forgot. Don't do this, cover your mouth. Try not to breathe. Just gonna step away for a sec. <sighs> okay, and then we will chuck in four parts orchid bark. One, two, and it's just gonna be the rest of this bag. There we go. Doesn't have to be perfect. The sparrows are going berserk. Okay, so mix it up. The easiest way I've found to do this is usually to get a bigger bucket and just pour it back and forth a few times. Again, trying not to breathe in the fumes. Fumes. Probably good enough. The last thing that I will chuck in there is a tiny bit of horticultural uh, charcoal just to take a bit of the toxins out of the soil, soak it up, and also there's just something else sort of large and porous. And there we go. All done. Now, um, I have to think about what kind of pot I will put this guy in. I don't have something really small. Maybe I will be restricted to using what we had the plant in. The only other one that I have is potentially this one. So this is 20 centimeters and this one is what, 25? 25. So I guess we'll take those two in and we'll just see how we go. Play it by ear. So I'm gonna take this. I need my flower to put on the bottom of the pot and my soil. All right, here we go. Man, it's cold. It's cold today. It's like 10 degrees Celsius. <laughs> I'm gonna do this quick because I've got to get the kids from daycare soon. All right, and I also have to think about what pole to have this thing growing up. I have a whole bunch of Coco Qua Koya poles and I'm thinking maybe something like this. Could do it on a moss pole, but I might do it on this thing. This is probably good enough for now. Alright, got all my stuff. I'm gonna do this without making a 
huge mess in my garage with one hand. You wonder why the garage is messy, guys. Beats me. There we go. And we'll just close the garage. Don't want anyone flogging my pots. So, Coco Coya pole. I think this is a meter, 120 centimeters. So about three feet, guys. Plastic, plastic, plastic. Everything comes wrapped in plastic these days. I don't know why they needed to do it. It's something like this. Seems a bit redundant. And they had to sticky tape the instructions maybe on how to use this thing. Yeah, great. So I reckon the 20 centimeter pot is probably gonna be fine for this guy. I think it's gonna be a nice snug fit. So I reckon that's all good. Let me just leave you sitting here. I'm looking forward to working out where the hell to put this plant too. <laughs> so I'm gonna just quickly cut some of this fly wire, gauze, whatever you wanna call it. I love these things that just have heaps of different names in different countries like cling wrap. I swear there's like four different things that I've heard that being called. We call it glad wrap here in Australia, but I've heard, I think, was it cellar wrap or something? I don't know, the Americans and Canadians use something else. And then there's obviously cling wrap. Yeah, I don't know. Heard a bunch though. Anyway, so I've just chucked that in to stop making a mess effectively in the room where I'm gonna keep this guy because I don't want saw coming out of the bottom of this constantly. We have our nice saw mix over here. I'm just gonna put a, an inch Probably, yeah, about an inch at the bottom here and just make sure that that gauze is sitting down. As you can see here, bang. I don't have space for everything, Pete. I love how I chose to do this after cleaning the house. <laughs> it's gonna require a nice big clean afterwards. Okay, so, and it's so funny, every time I get one of these plants out, I am so tempted to just chop it up and propagate. Do you guys ever get that sort of need to propagate everything you have? I don't know. I, I, like as much as I want big plants, I get such a kick out of propagating things and growing them out, seeing them root, everything like that. All right, so I kind of want to pull more of this soil off, but I, at the same time, I don't really want to um, do too much damage to the roots, so I might just put it in as is. It's so funny when you can see the previous pot <laughs> and the roots are still kind of in that shape. Uh, all right, so what am I gonna do? I'm gonna put this to the front. Maybe front like that, or should I have it towards the back? Maybe the middle. And I'm gonna think about where to put this pole. I guess the safest thing to do is probably, look at that. It's probably to put some holes into the pot, to be honest, and zip tie it to the back of the pot. In fact, I think I might do that quickly. All right, so we'll take you out, lie you down. Where is my Leatherman? And some zip ties. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull out the knife here, go towards the top and just twist gently, apply a bit of pressure, and you end up making a uh, kind of little drill hole. I'll do two of those, sort of about an inch apart here. I'll give you a look in a sec, guys. It's pretty easy. So that is what I have done. I'm going to then Put this pole sort of leaning back and flush. I could probably even put the edge of it over like that. And hopefully, I might have to do this twice. Yeah, I might have to do this twice, guys, just to make it make sure it's stable. So I'm gonna go down a little further. I guess it's just an extra hole for water to drain out of if I overwater. <laughs> All right, there we go. So I put another two down here. I will line this guy up. I should be able to push this up slightly. Can I um, push the coco coa up the pole? Nah, no, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> All right, actually it did. Sweet. All right, so the wooden part of the stake is actually right at the bottom here, and it's in that plastic uh, nook here, which is great. So it's as deep as possible and it's not gonna slip to the side. And in fact, no, I can't leave it there. So I'm just gonna open. Should have done this beforehand. Um, okay, zip tie. So, <laughs> probably want to come in through the back. Turn around the side. There we go. Out you come. And we'll do another one down the bottom here. Oh, the same deal. Outside first. In you go. Outside first. 
You know what, not much water is probably gonna be able to get out of here to be honest, because it's full of the Ziploc. All right, there we go. That was easy. And same deal here. Uh, I've got it the right way around. There we go. Okay, so that's attached. Great. So there we go. And the good thing is now, I think I can probably kind of lift the pot up by that. All right, nice. Okay, so next step, put the knife away. And we shall put this tie constellation into place. I think this is gonna work really nicely, guys. The only thing that I'm worried about is the roots are kind of a little too high. So I might actually have to take some of this soil out in order to make space for these roots at the bottom to be able to get this, um, let's see, can I move things around a little bit gently? That's better. Okay, now we've sunk it down a bit. Though I do kind of want it flush up against the pole. How can I do this without breaking everything? And you know what's easy? Probably tying this to the pole first before I put the soil in, or at least holding it there. You know what, I'm just gonna hold it. There we go, try and center things. Hopefully you guys can see okay. There we are. And then I need the soil right here. So I guess what we're gonna do is spread the mess out. Jesus Christ, bone dry, Pete. What were you smoking? I guess that's why they say those moisture meters are dodgy. Mm and you shouldn't always trust them because there is not an ounce of water in that soil and for some reason it was telling me that it was moist. So, God, all right, I'm making a huge mess. Don't tell my wife, guys. She's still sleeping, so we're all good. I'll just vacuum afterwards, okay? It's just between you and me. Someone's gonna send this video to her on, on Instagram, or she'll comment below and be like, clean the floor. <laughs> I just vacuumed. Just vacuum paint. Okay, so that looks good. Give it a slap. Try and get that soil to go down into any gaps that might be there at the bottom. And I'm gonna have to, all right, cool. Hold this in place. Good thing is, you guys can't see, but I've got my toolbox down here on the ground behind me and I can only just reach it so that I can grab out some of my grow, what's the, what's it called again? I've forgotten the name, you can find this, you can find this Velcro tape at Bunnings and it is just great stuff for connecting plants to poles. So I think we're just going to go below the um, apical dominant bud tip growing point of the plant, you know what I mean? And have it like that, I guess. I kind of did want it closer to the pole, this feels a bit, <laughs> dodgy to me, but perhaps we can fix that next time we potter up. The only issue was that it couldn't get that close to the roots. I would have had to have taken the pole out and kind of put it in sideways like that. And I have a feeling the plant would have just pushed it backwards. So this way, at least now that it's attached to the pot, the plant can't really force the pole or move it around. The pole will always be hopefully in this, on this angle. So yeah, maybe I'll add just one more for a bit of added support. We can all use a little support sometimes. Uh, this leaf and this is just another one of the um, leaves, leaves that has shot off so it's not going to block any of the growth coming out the growth will come out the next bit here sweet okay so I think we're done guys now we just need to give this puppy art or puppy tree plant a water so over to the watering station you know what I need to do first chop off these zip ties there we go, okay. So, good thing is, today I have all the moss poles here against the window getting a bit of light while I clean the bench area. So you'll actually be able to get a better viewing than normal. Uh, hopefully with these lights not on the way. Um, I've got a begonia maculata here that is beautiful. It's flowering, just stunning. Um, I've just watered that girl, so put her at the back here. And I think, I might give this one a fertilize too, so I'll show you that process as well. I'm using Growth Technology Foliage Focus. I will dilute it down to, what are they called, weak here, so five mil per litre. I'm using filtered water here. You'll be able to see down here. I just fill up this two litre juice bottle and put in five mil, and then 
another five mil, so it makes life easier if you just let it fill whilst you put it in there. You don't have to give it a shake afterwards because it's already, um, what would you say, perturbed, stirred up, ready to rock. So I think I'm probably just gonna pour two liters through the pot here. What I will do is drain the water out of the sink over this side, put the plug down so that it captures all of this nutrient water, and then I will, after I've watered it and let it drain through, sit it in there just for a bit longer to make sure that it sucks up a bit of the water with nutrients in it in case it does go through. It's probably fine because it's new soil, but sometimes if the plants have been sitting in their soil, like that begonia behind this one, it's been in that soil for quite a while, and so I notice when I pour the water through, the water just goes through instantly. And so I think there's channels that have been made through the soil and so the water just goes through and it doesn't actually wet the soil. So a lot of the time it's really good to save what you've just used, especially if you've used some you know, expensive fertilizer or something in it, put it in the sink, let it go through so that this sort of gets a little bit wet and then just sit it in there for 10 to 15 minutes and let it sort of bottom feed, bottom water. So anyway, here we go, bottoms up. There you go, girl. I'm sorry you're so thirsty and that I didn't pay attention. I'm so anal with these sort of more expensive plants that I do rely a little more on the moisture meter, which I will have to learn not to do solely uh, because I don't want to overwater them and kill them. And I know that Thai constellations have this reputation for root rot, but I should have been paying attention sooner and being like, eh, it hasn't been watered in a month and it's still saying it's wet. I was expecting that the sand perhaps that was the layer on top that she put down was acting like a sort of barrier and keeping the soil really moist. But when I broke through it today to have a closer look, that was when I realized, uh, actually the sand's done nothing and the soil below is bone dry. And I guess I should mention too, the other thing that I was doing and the reason that I decided to check was I've been paying attention to the leaves and they kind of, as I said at the start, lost their vigor a bit and were looking a bit flaccid. So that was also what made me want to investigate a little more. I wasn't just going to keep leaving it to get worse and worse and worse. I noticed that change and was like, hmm, something is a foot. Something is a foot, something is a hand. Something is a face, something is a miss. All right, so I'm just going to pour this all through. I'm probably actually not going to let it sit in the water. I think that'd be overkill. This soil, although it's draining really quickly, as you can probably see at the back here, there's loads of water just coming instantly through and we will have you know filled up this sink quite a bit. I think it's going to have soaked up heat, so it's not going to need to sit in the water, but I will just leave it there for 10 to 15 minutes. And you can see too, these leaves are probably a dead giveaway to you guys with a little more experience than me. You're probably looking at this plant like, yeah, Pete, she's thirsty as, like, come on. These leaves have curled over. She needs a drink. Hello, wake up. But still learning, still learning. Anyway, yeah, pretty happy with that, to be honest. So let me just give you a look at her. So she is massive, at least for me. I love when people say that, yeah, massive plant. And you're like, yeah, because it's got more than four leaves because you haven't propagated or chopped it up like everything else, Pete. Um, yeah, so this is big for me anyway. This is the largest Thai constellation, probably the largest plant that I have in my collection currently. The lighting is crap. Here is all the water that has drained out. So I'm just gonna let that go. As you can see, it's probably two thirds of what was actually put in there and there's still a whole bunch here coming out. I've got to show you this, guys. Do you feel proud of yourself? It's been in PJs all day. It's 4, it's 4 30 p.m. <laughs> So, day without the kids. Kel, my wife here, was um, doing a lot of cleaning this morning whilst I was doing some work. And then, um, what are you doing? What are you doing? God damn it! Do it, do it, do it. Go when you can. I took my jumper off because I was pretty warm and they're just chick magnets. Or wife magnets, maybe. Maybe wife magnets better. Thief! Thief! I'm always like, where's my jumper? Mm. Anyway, I did the vacuuming. I did the vacuuming, guys. My wife came in and was like, my floor! So I've cleaned it up. Yeah, you can use it, it's okay. Nice and clean, look at that. You need one of those little twinkle effects. Um, <laughs> you rat bag. All right, anyway, I'm gonna finish up here uh, and go get the kids. And I'll see if I can show you the plant in a little bit. We'll see if it like sort of invigorates, <laughs> becomes a bit more vigorous. Alrighty guys, time for a sort of final update. So, g'day. Um, <laughs> hopefully you can see it's over here in the corner. There's an elbow here in front of it. The light's hitting everything the same, so everything kind of looks yellowy. But um, yeah, it, it's perked up a bit, as you can tell by these leaves here. They look a little more vigorous. 
and I am pleased that it's on this pole. I think it's gonna grow nicely. It probably won't be in here for very long though, uh, now that it's sort of sitting upright instead of flat. But yeah, that was, that was a fun little adventure. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. See ya. Thank you.